godfather of urban music. Describe grime to a five-year-old. If you don't get screwed over, you're not going to learn. How many songs have you recorded? It's thousands. I got stabbed multiple times, but some people got stabbed once and die, right? Inside Buckingham Palace. You just look around my house comparing me to this house. <laughs> the music industry sell whatever makes a profit. I like to always introduce the, the guests with the mug. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Inside Track with me, Luca Alam. I am delighted to be welcoming the godfather of urban music in the UK. If it's not a Rolex, she don't really care. Shock. Yeah, we're popping bottles over here. Lord God, me say you're ready. From your north, say you're good gal and you don't need nothing. I ain't got to stand up with a hundred odd man. Nope. Even though I can. Yeah. Got to be a one man band. On the road, I'll ride my own hand. Wiley Cats. Mr. Richard Cowie, MBE, welcome to the show. What's happening, you all right? Living the dream, mate, living good, the dream. Good, good, good. How are things with you? How's Dubai treating you so yeah, far? Yeah, it's really good, it's really good. Like, first year was like, um, got to get your, your, yourself together with like your Emirates ID and all of that, I was like. Yeah. And then going in second year, good. And third year almost now, so. It's really a bit good. different, right? It's a bit different in the UK. It is different, but, I, I, but for me, like, I love the sunshine. Yeah. And I love the beach, and I like the um, the vibe that is kind of like the safety net to, if you've got a family. Yeah, yeah, nice. So we had a little bit of a chat off screen, and, and I was asking, how would you like to be introduced? Right? Yes. So the Godfather of Urban Music, right, yes. in the UK. Yes. So how proud are you to call yourself that? People, people say it, and because obviously, like the thing is. If you are like a, a, a great at something or you are achieved at something, right? I don't believe that you can say it yourself. Like I believe yeah. people will say so it. So when do people start calling you that? When do they start I reaching guess, critical mass? I guess after time of me doing music like over a long period of time, but always trying to help others and trying to put people on forgetting about myself and then like when it comes to that last minute I'm like oh my god what about myself and I've yeah, got to quickly get yeah. myself on I think it comes from the idea of me putting others before myself yeah musically and you know like giving giving people paths the opportunity where they can go on yeah. and be themselves without me getting all up in their business and all the rest yeah. of it Yes. Like Wally, I'm I'm really excited to talk to you today. Yes, good. I'm really excited. There's a lot to talk about. Yes. Um, but first things first. Yes. Um, in my show, I like to always introduce the, the guests with the mug, the mug that they have. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the mug. Let's so, talk about the mug. So what happened with the mug this morning? Right. So the mug. This is really weird because I've actually got my own mugs with my face on. Right. Nice. Right. Just but, in case you forget. Right. So <laughs> um, Daniel, let me know. Like, bring the mug. Okay. And then I was. Um, waiting for my daughter, she was getting ready. And then I rung the taxi. I was thinking, I don't want to be late. I rushed and I actually forgot to put my shoes on. I still have my slippers <laughs> on and definitely forgot the mug. But I would have, it would have been a great opportunity to bring my mug with my face on yeah, my yeah. merchandise. And 100%. I'm, uh, so we're going to have an honest, open yes. uh, and easy and easy chat today. I'm yes. really excited about it. I'm really excited. Thank you for being part of the show. Should I call you Godfather? Is that so? No, uh, Wiley. Wiley. Let's call you Wiley. Yeah, Wiley. So Wiley, tell me a little bit. How did you get into the music industry in the first place? I got into the music industry because I was doing music anyway, as a fan of music, as a hobby, as a um, son of a musician. Okay. And um, I never knew it was possible to actually get into the industry. But um, I guess I loved music that much and it loved me back. And I can remember my first early steps. I guess I was, um, obviously I used to watch Top of the Pops. Who didn't? Massive inspiration, yeah. whether like people like to admit it or who did, not. Who did you grow up watching? Who did you sort of idolize as a kid? I, I, I liked um, Musical Youth. They were from Birmingham. And I used to listen to them and I like I basically liked whatever was in the charts and, okay. and but at the time or when I got to teenager, I would have been like I would have tried to not face that fact. But actually, whether it was like whatever the 
pop music was happening, yeah. I was definitely into it. New yeah. Kids on the Block and, yeah, he loved all that. you know, all of that. I was definitely Marky into Mark. it. 100% yeah. I yeah. was into it. So I actually appreciate that because it was just like, I remember when um, an a, a, a artist called Smiley Culture first went on there and Tipper Irie and I was yeah. like, oh my God. So I, 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 that inspired me massively. Yeah. yeah. But I guess like my my way into the music industry would have been like I was watching stuff like award shows, yeah. and it came like Mobo Awards, and it yeah. was like Glamour Kid and Shola Amar yeah, and yeah. these two, these people, and they actually gave me hope to let me know like I could do it. So and did you ever sort of because I had this when I was growing up? Yes, the, the US were dominating the 100%. charts. And did you ever think like? No, you know what? We want to put UK a little bit on the map. We want to sort of like, you know, say that we can actually do better music. A hundred, a hundred percent. I looked at it because uh, um, I guess everyone looks at the US whole entertainment system as like the number one entertainment on the earth, whether it's like movies, uh, film stuff or music or whatever. So I, like I said, those people, Glamour Kid, Shola Amar, people like that, Phoebe One, different people, they gave me inspiration to plus like radio, Choice yeah. FM and yeah. the radio stations and pirate radio stations, yeah. Ritz FM, Deja Vu, all of it, Call cool FM, just gave me inspiration. And um, I think those are the reasons I got the drive to actually go into music yeah. industry. And did you have a good network of friends around you, similar interests, did they help push you? Did they encourage you to get into it? Talk to me a little bit about your story as a kid growing up, realizing you had a little bit of talent for it. Yeah, and yeah. then what made you actually decide this is actually the career for me? Okay, so um, DJ Slimzy was my friend from school. And he Great was like- Great name, Yeah, yeah, he was like, um, he used to be called Slim Fast. He changed okay. it to Slimzy. And he was proper like into hardcore, jungle, drum and bass. And he set up the station, pirate radio station, right? Yeah. So. How old were you back then? Like 13, 14, okay. and, you know what I mean? So he, him doing that gave me massive inspiration because like you would be on the pirate radio and people would call up yep. and they want their name to be shouted out on the, um, the pirate radio and and being on pirate made you feel like you was on legal, yeah. right? But yeah. So that built my confidence massively into becoming a like, Sounds of the Rinse FM, phone line number, blah, blah, blah. Hello, can you big up blah, blah from blah, blah? Yeah. So, and yeah, then, yeah. you know, so then the tapes come back of yeah. the shows and stuff. So that built my... And every time you did it, you just got more and more confidence. Yeah, yeah. You it, enjoyed it, it more. A hundred percent. of your own voice. And people yeah. saying, you know what? Respect. Yeah, because it's interacting yeah. across the airwaves, I guess. It wasn't TV yet, yeah. but airwaves. And then, um, so that was like the beginning bit. And then I guess go into different studios. I was always like trying to make music, different youth clubs and stuff. And I guess go into different studios, making music um, and meeting different people, um, Jazzy B and, and different people that I already saw there. Yeah. That, because doing music and being in the music industry is completely different. Like being in the music industry is like a football player being in the Premier League. Yeah. I guess if you're in the or you industry. sign your first professional contract. There you, you go, go from right? Like Seventeen, you sign for a club, and there then you sudden go. you're catapulted into another right. league. Right. So that's the, so that's what that would be like. But you could just be doing music, and you're not in the industry, and you're still good at music, and you put music out. But it's not the same as being in the industry and doing business, right? I guess. So doing business is like the bit that I had to get into and it's not hobby, it's a hobby, but yeah. it's you're not just doing it is anymore it, is as a it hobby. Is it a dirty business? Do you find like you I have think to... all business is dirty. I yeah. think every business, I think, I think the whole point of business is to like do business and make a profit. Did you ever have to Sorry. screw someone over to get to where you are? I, I didn't, but I've been screwed over, but I don't, I'm not mad at it. I don't take it as like, oh, you were screwed over. I look at it as a learning curve because obviously when you go into business, if yeah. you don't get screwed over, you're not gonna learn much yeah. about business, I guess. Yeah, do you, do you owe anyone anything? No. Forgetting where you are? No. It feels no. good saying that, right? No, no, no. Uh, to get from, to forgetting where I got to, 
I always give props to like my dad, DJ yeah. Slimzy, the whole pirate radio era yeah. genius. Um, I give props to, again, Glamour Kid, Shola Amma. I give props to people who inspired me. Yeah. So I will always, my inspirations, um, I owe them. Yeah. Sorry, that's I thought you meant do I owe someone money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's waiting outside. Yeah. Um, you've you've had a lot of albums. You've had a lot of success. I've had a lot of music out there. Yeah, I guess. How many how many songs have you recorded? Oh, loads, loads, loads. Give me when a number. I when give I me a number. die, give me a number. Give me a number. I, it's I, approximately. I, it's thousands. When I wow. when I die, they will obviously when I leave the earth, like they will um, they will go back, and they will have. You know, like when they, I guess, you know, like Tupac died and then they just were releasing music and releasing music and releasing music, like loads and loads. Yeah. Some stuff that you never heard, some stuff you never knew he recorded. Yeah. Same with Biggie. Yeah. So I, I, when I leave the earth, there'll be like so much music. They'll be like, oh my God, is this how much he really did? You know nice, what I mean? Nice, nice. Do you feel proud of yourself or what you've achieved? I do, but I, I also... Um, like I said, I, I feel proud of myself, but I also appreciate the people who inspired me to get there. Like yeah. I always look back and just think, okay, without you, I wouldn't have got here. Without yeah. you, I wouldn't have got here. So uh, I guess I, I'm I'm more thankful to them yeah. than me. Just like yes, I got here myself. You know. Yeah. yeah. And you've got you've got four kids. Yeah. Uh, do you want them to get into the industry? I want them to do what makes them happy and i want them to i want them whatever they go into i want them to learn and educate themselves about it before they go into there because yeah. i feel like sometimes people go into stuff um without knowing yeah. fully what's happening and if you do that you can learn on the job but you can also educate yourself so when you go in there you just know on the job yeah. i guess so why Wiley and why Wiley Cat? It came from oh, Wiley yeah, yeah, Cat yeah. or something, right? Well, the Thundercats the and uh, right. Wiley Coyote and the term. Did you come up with it or one of your Wiley, mates? You're Wiley. I was, I was called Slimzy Wild Child. I was okay. called Wild Child and then um, there was another DJ. Uh, there was a girl, a girl DJ um, on Cool FM. Okay. And she was called Wild Child. I didn't know her and but because she was in a bigger pirate than me. I thought, oh my God, well, she's in a bigger pirate radio space than me, so I'm going to just change it to Wiley. And um, yeah, it stuck. It's sort of stuck. Yeah. Um, so you've got an MBE. I have. That's crazy. It is. It so is. Talk to me about how, they, do they call you up? Do they, do they send you a letter? How, talk they, to the process of, of getting you, that. You get an MBE, they won't call you up. They call up your team of people or your management or your label or whoever you're with who's more closer to them. Yeah. Um, or in some cases, uh, I guess your team or your people will go to them yeah. if you if they feel like you've done years and years of helping others to achieve what they want to achieve and... You know, your services to whether it's youth work or whatever it is. I guess um, they contacted my team at the time and um, they was like, right, we're going to collect to MBE. And I was like, oh shit, I, 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 I've seen other people collect them. And I was like, okay, uh, went and got the MBE. And, um, wait, wait, so when you say went and got the MBE? Yeah, not, like they call like you to come to the It's not like you're going to the, the supermarket and saying, I'm going to pick no, up the grocery. No, but they, no, but um, they call you... They give you a day and there's loads of different people going there for all different reasons. So they give you a time and, uh, slot as well. Yeah, yeah, Where'd yeah. you go? Uh, Buckingham, Buckingham Palace. And what was that like? Yeah. In, do you know what? Inside Buckingham Palace You just look like, around my house comparing me to that. Yeah, yeah, it's the same <laughs> as this. It's the same as this. No, inside Buckingham Palace is, right, everyone's got, everyone goes to their grandma's house, right? Yeah. Uh, your grandma's house is a certain way. Yeah. Nan, that, there's a certain is, smell as well. Yeah, like your nan and granddad's house yeah. is a, a certain way. That was just like a mega sized mansion version of everyone's <laughs> nan and granddad's house, basically. That's brilliant. You've been stabbed. I have multiple, man. What a multiple times. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. So, you know what as well? Okay, okay, go context. on, tell me. Give me context. What happened? Where were you? How nightmare. many times? You know, nightmare. has this happened more than once? Yeah, nightmare. But also now when I look back at it, I can see why. At the time, you can't see why you're young. Yeah. You're up, trying to uphold this image of you're who you are, they're who they are. No one wants to back down yeah. or the rest of it. And it's a sensitive topic 
now, um, not to me, I'm past it, right? But just for young people, boys, uh, going through a crazy time within the UK, London, wherever, right? It's a crazy time. It spills out of wherever, I guess, into other places too, right? And it's, it is a, it's a sensitive topic because not everyone lives. So some people, so I got stabbed multiple times, but some people got stabbed once and die, right? Sensitive topic. And I I used to look at it, I guess, as, okay, this happened. You went to this club. You was arguing with this person before. You've gone to this club. They've seen you. 50 people have rushed you. You're stabbed. You drive yourself to the hospital. You know what's happened, what led to it, okay? I've, I looked at it that way, right? And I, and I... I guess I was like, okay, why did this happen, right? This happened because me and him was arguing and this was uh, this one and that. And then me and my friend caught this one and then another day, they've, and then we've gone to this rave, they've caught us. So it's not just, these situations are not just, I woke up and got stabbed. I can see where my part to play in it and I can see the other people's So my next question becomes, did you deserve it? No, I didn't deserve it, but I guess two people not backing down and growing up from the days of let's go on the grass and fight, um, the reason why people would carry a knife, why it would be because you don't want to get beaten up. So someone who doesn't want to go on the grass and fight and get beaten up, they don't want the humiliation of getting beaten up, so they'll carry a knife. Yeah. You understand? And then, so understanding all of that and all the situations I got into and got stabbed, it made me think, and I said to myself, this is a knife, a small knife, my day. Today, they might have long knives. Prior to all of this, there was wars on a battlefield with a sword and a shield. So, you know, like people will say, oh, they carry a knife, why they carry a knife? Why this, why that? Oh, this and that and da 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 But prior to us, men, sword and shields and a horse was normal for men, mm. sadly. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, when there's like, stop knife crime and stop this and stop that. I look and I think, well, why is it? Where has it come from? Yeah. It's come from there. Yeah. So we weren't even alive yet. So just as men and boys being alive, it's already embedded in... But is that an excuse? No, it's not an excuse. Well, my but ancestors used to do it, so we should... No, know. but I'm just saying like a men and an yeah. army yeah. and then boys and knives. Yeah. So you know what, what, I mean? age, what age did you start carrying a knife? I, I weren't really a knife carrier, to be honest with you, but I remember the time, like going into like 17, 18, 19, 20, boys would carry a knife. But prior to that, you know, in my uncle's day, there would be people who carry a knife and chase me and my uncle, not me, chase my uncles and his friends around. So knife culture yeah. doesn't just exist because there's kids in London stabbing each other. It, it, it's, exist, it's existed way before, it's you know? It's primal, it's more primal. Yeah, it's to do with well, men, power, greed, mm. war, invasion, land, wherever you want to go. It comes from like way before hundreds of kids running around London stabbing each other. You know what I mean? They don't even know. They won't look, they won't realize it and think, oh, sh like, why do boys carry knives? Oh, shit. Well, years and years ago, those men carried swords and shields. It trickles down behavior. Okay, interesting question. Would yeah. you allow? Would you allow your kids to carry knives? No, that's why we don't live in London or anywhere where they would. We don't live there. Not that they wouldn't. They'll will carry it wherever they want to carry it. But like, I I don't want my children to be in the same yeah. kind of growing up places. Same I was, environment. No way. No way. No way. Because it's just. It was tough where you're growing up, huh? Yeah, but not 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 to necessarily. It was tough. Like like I said, in my day and age it was still go on the grass and fight as yeah. well as like, it wasn't everyone's got guns and everyone's got knives. It wasn't yeah. really that, you know, but I, I, for my children, I just couldn't, you know, I, I, I couldn't bear it. I had to get them out of there to that be makes fair. Makes sense. Did, does the music industry make that crime element more prevalent or? Well, the music can, the music industry. Well, you, when, when you were growing up and sort of getting into sort of, you know, the world of grime, which now is called, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. We'll talk about yeah. grime later. But yeah, yeah. Urban music, did, yeah. did that all help sort of create or uh, empower you to have to take this type of lifestyle? No, but I will tell you one thing. 
because again, music industry at that time was Because if you're seen as a gangster, right, it's going to help your music career later on, potentially. Well, if you're seen as someone who's going projecting violence, I'm not saying well, you were. Well, here's, say if, would, that, would that then make well, you more well, popular? Well, here's the thing. The music industry sell whatever makes a profit. Hmm. If death is going to make profit, they will sell death. Yeah. If um, comedy is going to, they will sell comedy. Remember, they are just going to make a profit, right? So all of the, what you're saying obviously comes from America. Like it's more prevalent, pre what did you say? What's prevalent. Prevalent in America, right? And, and so if in America, gangster rap is being sold or, you know, from the days of when it started and stuff, if that's going to make money and it looks cool to be like that and keeping it real, music business, record labels will sell it. Because they just want to, obviously, they just want to get money, right? The, the the whole world obviously looks at America, I guess, um, for entertainment and stuff, right? So if they're looking at that, could that rub off on people? Yes, it could. Unfortunately, it yeah. could. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my time, music, we wasn't trying to sell death. It just came. We just it liked came. music, you yeah. know? We wasn't, I wasn't going to run down the street and then um, and then um, stab someone and then <laughs> go make a song about it. I wasn't yeah. going to do that. Yeah. But again, artists and music people, they speak on their experiences. Yeah. So if someone grew up in a circle where it was like that and they speak of it, I understand. Because yeah. you're speaking about your experiences and what you have been through and what you haven't been through. But that, that wouldn't have been my era. My era wasn't like like that per yeah. se that like it wasn't like guns and knives within the music Got it. let's talk about the difference between garage yes and grime yes is there a difference and what it is the difference 100 percent. garage is like before grime to start with and garage is like most garage there's all different elements of garage let's just say but a lot of garage would have been um like two step or four to the floor, uh, vocals, yeah. female or male, um, MCs as well, female or male on the tracks, um, different raving scene, you know, that it, it was before grime. So garage, grime's existence came from garage, if you like, because it would have been loads of young people doing that type of stuff, but then the music that those young people was making might not have really got too accepted into that. Cause it's already set. The scene was yeah, set yeah. with who the But what is it? I still I'm still struggling to understand. What is grime? Grime is it, how, how it, could you, yeah. It, it, I didn't call it grime. The reason they called it grime well, is they because call, they call you, you the creator yeah, of grime. Yeah, but the reason yeah, but we didn't call it at the time. The reason the reason the word, where the word grime came from is these beats were being made similar tempo to Garage and they were dark and grimy. Yeah. Like the bass lines yeah. were grimy. So that's yeah. why the word grime okay. comes from. Like grimy bass yeah. lines, dark beats and you know what I mean? And so that's, that, that's, that's only for the UK. Any other countries adopted that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it's grime all around the world. There's grime. There's people who attach themselves to grime. Like if you, it, it, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's good. You, you will see... Uh, on the internet, there's people like Brazilian grime, Australian grime. But it's all around the world. Yeah. It's not, Did it come from the UK though? Yeah, yeah. But it's not like as big as like hip hop. Yeah. And to me, it is an element of hip hop, yeah. which yeah. no one really wants to admit because it's beats, lyrics. Yeah. So before, like before any of us did that, like even in 1946, like I saw a video of these, uh, these guys, I forgot what it was called. They was old school. And Did they, they were they were sorts? rapping. No, no, no. <laughs> but they were rapping, yeah. Like melody as well. And if you listen to it, it would be the roots of like spitting bars. Like, even though it was like, I said, long come da, 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 da. but it was right, it was like yeah. beginning of so it was like blues yeah. and so on type of thing. But yeah, grime is the reason the word grime comes from just the music was grimy, the beats and the bass. Talk to me a little bit about what's going on in the world of social media and you. Yeah. You don't seem to be best of friends. 
No, social media. Well, I've been deplatformed from social media, haven't I? So, and I've just come back on now. I've got uh, accounts, but the what thing happened? about social media is, it's a setup. It's the man who made Twitter said, "Right, we're going to make Twitter, and people are going to tweet, and they're going to tweet what's inside their minds, and then we're going to know what's going on inside everyone's mind." Like it's just a big setup. The best one, which I'm not even on anymore, but is the most normal one is like Facebook. I guess you can go on Facebook and find all your friends from school, family members, and all the rest of it. Twitter is just a big escalation of tweets. If you if you tweet and say, the sky is red today, someone will say, well, the sky is blue if I look at it. Someone will say, well, the sky is purple. It's just, yeah. it's a setup. So why were you removed? What happened? I was removed because I had gone on there and I had tweeted lots of stuff at, um, I guess, aiming at like some business people within the music industry that, again, I kind of caught on to the fact that they, like, if you grow up on the street and it's like crooked, well then business is even more crooked. Music industry crooked. Yeah. So I guess, you know, like, the way that the system was kind of coming for me in a crooked way, led me to do all of that, I guess. Okay. Do you need a safe word now? Or? <laughs> no, I, I don't need a safe word. It's because it's, the truth is, if I realize something and I learn something by going through years and years of uh, business, and then I stop and say, but hold on, this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, that's my realization. Yeah. I guess like no one can, um, you know, like no one can take away the fact that I realized something is not right around here. So people didn't like what you were saying. No, on social, they took no. it. They took it down. Yep, the um, platform was it on what, what platforms? All platforms. It was, that was on Twitter. No, that was on Twitter. Okay, actually, mostly now called X, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll just keep it Twitter. That's like, X doesn't even make sense. Obviously, Space X, I get it, but it doesn't make sense. He should have just left it Twitter. But I guess he'd done it because of his problems with certain business people. Yeah. So, you know, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you doing at the moment, Wiley? I am making music still. I'm helping people. I've got a record label. I am, um, same thing I've always done, but I guess I'm just getting older. So I'm going into like a different area of business, I guess. And, um, you know, you can't do it forever, but what you can do is you can learn and use what you've learned yeah. to go into like another area of business where now you are your own boss instead of like working for someone, I guess, okay. yeah. Right, I, on um, one one thing I love doing and I, what I want to do on the show is have a bit of an improv section. Like this whole thing is improv anyway. Yeah, right? yes, There's, yeah. It's just been a free flowing chat, but I have, um, I have a part where it includes different topics that are completely random, yeah. but linked to who you are or the industry that you're in. Yes. Uh, they just so happen to be in a bag. Okay, okay. And they so happen to be in a bunch of balls on them, right? Okay. So what I'd love to do, <laughs> open up the bag, pick out a ball, read it out, and we'll talk about it. I bet you didn't think you're going to be uh, dipping into a bag of balls today, did you? Oh, man. Music industry, boom or bust. Right. Has Is the music industry, was it better when you were growing up? Is it, is it better off now? Where do you see the future of it going? Has it had its uh, you know golden period? It was better when I was growing up. The music, in, right, the music industry is already set up. It's already infrastructure. It's already owned by Sony, Warner, Universal, blah, 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 blah. In genres like garage, grime, jungle, in a genre, you are your own music industry. This is what everyone doesn't know at the time, right? You are, your, if, you're, is there, if there's a scene or a genre of people yeah. selling records and everyone's, you know. Um, but there's a market for it. There's it. a big enough market you, for it. Then you are your own music industry. Yeah. The problem comes when you're doing well within your scene or genre and then someone from the music industry comes over, dangles carrots, money, and says, okay, I see that you're doing well over there. You made blah, blah, blah that year. Okay, well, if I give you this money up front, you come over here. That's the mistake. 
Yeah. If you're in a scene or you're in a genre and you're already doing your stuff, making money, you're not supposed to go into the music industry because you're already in your own one. Yeah. So, so music, yeah. music industry boom or bust, like for me, it was better when we were in control. Yeah. So if you've got someone growing up now, yes. they're 17, 18, they want yeah. to get industry, what's your advice to them? I, if, if someone's growing up now and they're in a genre of people that's already doing music yeah. and selling records or selling or streaming or doing whatever you're doing, I guess... Should like, I put this yeah, put, put yeah, on the yeah. table. On the I side. guess um, if you're already doing it, keep doing it. Don't let someone buy you out because someone buying you out is only buying you out because they can see you doing it. Yeah. But because they might might take you six months to a year to earn that money and they're just giving it to you in one check. Yeah. But they're giving it to you in one check because they're part of a bigger situation where they can take you from there and sell you within their infrastructure and their scene. And then they're going to make 20, 30 times, maybe, like not always, but maybe more than what they've given you. Yeah. So don't be scared to put in the work. You know, a lot of people start by putting in the work and then someone can talk you out of, mm. like the McDonald's brothers. Mm. Started McDonald's, all of a sudden a man comes along, lawyer, talk them out of it, all of a sudden swindle them, swindle them, swindle them. Okay, but they're not selling. Okay, well, you know what? What you need to do is buy the land on which they're putting these McDonald's. And then do you understand? So there's always someone trying to be clever. Yeah. Don't fall for that person or those people trying to be clever. Great advice. Yeah, nice. that's what I'd say. Right, let's go for another ball. Yeah. Do you want to open up? Some are tough, some are easy. Media censorship, help or hindrance, yeah. help for me. Okay, so is it, yeah, so- Help for me. There's a lot of, there's a lot of media now has been heavily censored. You don't know what's real, you don't know what's not real. Yeah. Has it helped people? Oh, no, no, uh, okay, okay, sorry, wrong word. Help or hindrance. So I thought you meant me being censored. No. Me being censored helped me because yeah. it made me actually go and learn more about the okay. field in which I was in. Okay. Um, but, but, is censorship wrong or right? Of course yeah. it's wrong, but the people censoring you, they own a lot of yeah. these platforms. So it's just like, you send, you set up a platform tomorrow and then you're the boss of the platform. Mm. And then you have pissed me off one day. Yeah. And then I come on there, ah, you pissed me off. You can shut me off the platform. Do you, think, yeah, platform. do you think people have a free voice still? No, there's no such thing as that. There's no such thing as freedom of speech. There's no such, especially when you are a public figure. When you're a public figure, you're not allowed to speak. If you la if you speak when you're a public figure, if your company is owned by those who you're speaking on, if they're doing the wrong, yeah, then they'll just sack you anyway. I mean, I mean, you tried to speak, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And then. Shut me off, but do I? But do I understand? Well, obviously, I, if, by the time I looked into who owns this, who owns that, who owns this, yeah. who owns that, I realised that the business people that I was speaking on, some of them are from that background. Do you want to talk about so, what you actually said? I don't need to, because because what I'll be doing is dragging it up. Okay. But people in the world yeah. know my stance. Yeah. So for you, you want now? You, yeah, you want that chapter of your life to be almost closed no it's not closed it's never closes it's always okay. going to be open because okay. that's why we're talking that's why you're asking me now yeah. and it's obviously happened years ago it's never going to close yeah and me as being who i am and from the family background that i'm from yeah i was supposed to realize i wasn't like i was supposed to work out how the world runs how certain business runs who is running the business um, and to learn um, not to stereotype because I can say some, some business people I worked with are crooked. That's correct. I can't say all business people I worked with are crooked. You can't say that because they're not all crooked. In everyone's culture and background and walk of life, there are good people and there are bad people. The thing is that the line celebrities now have to walk is yeah. extremely narrow. You can't- 100%. You, you know, you, you can very rarely say what you really Yeah, you're feel. not allowed, you're not allowed. You have to be not a public figure, yeah. right? Um, but if you're a public figure, you can't. And, as, and the reason for that is you're most likely owned by the people you're about to speak out on. Yeah. So for instance, like I saw, um, one time I saw a person and they posted a documentary 
a basketball player, he posted a documentary. And the documentary is all about like ancient Egypt and yeah. what was going on and this and this and this and this. And then the NBA wanted to obviously get rid of him. Yeah. And because they had been told what content was in the documentary. So he posted the documentary. Yeah. They wanted to get rid of him because of the contents in the documentary. So there's something about the contents in the documentary that they just didn't want him to or anyone else to realize. Yeah. I get it. So they'll be a bit peed off. But today, if you look in the world and everything that's going on, you will see exactly whatever you saw me talking about or whatever you saw Kanye West talking about, whatever you saw Kyrie Irving, whatever you've heard Malcolm X talk about. And I'm not, Mal and everyone, a lot of people want to be Malcolm X. None of us are Malcolm X, right? But, everything that we were saying or talking about is going on today. Yeah. So you can see it. So even if someone at the time was like, oh, shut up, Wiley, shut up, Wiley, you're crazy, you're mad, you're a liar, you're this, you're that. Now today, they can see elements of what I was trying to yeah. say. I, I just, I just, it, it, you should never say stuff in anger because the anger will shield the fact that you had a few points, but, he was angry. Oh, he's angry. It got masked. Yeah. It got masked it, over because you of know, time. He's angry. Yeah, yeah. So then, oh yeah, he's angry. Yeah, he's angry. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you should never say stuff in anger. You should say it, just speak it. Like I know some proper people from my, who, who I grew up with. And instead of going on Twitter like da 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 and da 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 and da da da, they just would have come on and said something fishy about this music industry. They just would have said that. Yeah. And then no one would have said anything because yeah. they would have read it and it would have said, oh yeah, some, someone said there's something fishy about this in music industry, but it's not enough for the clickbait. It's not enough to make someone say, oh my God, he said something about this yeah. industry is fishy, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I'm with you. One of them. Time for another ball, mate. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Proudest moment of your life career. Do you know what? The, it, do you know what? The proudest moment of my life and career is something I realized by being in Dubai, which doesn't make sense. Some people will just be like, "But what about when you was at the blah blah?" The proudest moment is when I I I was here, and I was walking down the marina, and like people was online and everyone was talking about music and stuff and. Um, I've got a brother, he does music and stuff. And um, I was walking and I had a thought, I had a thought. And it would have had to come to me now because you can't see what you're doing whilst you're doing it, I guess, right? So, yeah. so I wouldn't have been able to see in 2003 what we was doing and where it was gonna get to, right? But I had a thought and the thought was, why do people actually call you the Godfather? Back to what you we were saying earlier. And then I went through everything I'd done, everyone I'd helped, people I helped for nothing, people I helped without taking a cut, people who, you know, take them to the water, they'll drink. If they don't drink, then they won't drink. I realized everything that I had done, all my achievements, all my, just everything music. Yeah. And it came to me, why they call me it, like what? Because there's other people who've done Godfather stuff. Like I could be a Godfather to someone else. DJ Slimzy could be a Godfather to me. Someone else could be, right? So there's other people. But if I wasn't here, sunshine, beach, blah, blah, da, da, and felt so at ease, because in London, I'm not at ease. I'm like, I've put myself under pressure in London. So I, I work really well under pressure. But for the first time in my life, going back on everything I'd done and not feeling under pressure, yeah. I accepted everything I had done for the reason that they would call you the Godfather. It was a realization moment of me thinking, oh my God, like I actually have done so much musically that that's why they call you the Godfather. But no one's ever gonna ring you up and say, 
you've done so much musically. They're not, Especially no, if you're in the middle of it. Yes. Right? So now you're you're in Dubai, you've yes. left the UK, yes. you can reflect yes. a little bit more. Yes. It's much easier if you look back and go, you know what, I've had actually a pretty decent career. Exactly, reflection so, moment. Yeah, reflection moment. That, right. was, that was the right. best feeling because otherwise you just, you know, like you're not allowed to big yourself up, no. basically. No. So Especially that mo- not on social. Right, so that moment came to me here, just yeah. walking down and trying to understand why they call you the Godfather, and that that was that's that was like the best really feeling nice. ever because really you nice. won't have those feelings again. You wouldn't have had it in London because that's where you're yeah. under pressure. You wouldn't have had it anywhere else, but I had it here. Yeah, and if you have it once, it's amazing. If you have yes. it twenty times, yes. all of a sudden you start becoming actually I'm a bit of a it, yeah, egocentric, a, right? Yeah. Right. So for the first yeah. time, I had that feeling of, you know, in actual fact, you are wily. Yeah, yeah. Like don't downplay. It. Downplay it to keep yourself keep the from, humility, right? But, but also but same accept time. the yeah. fact of who you are. Great insight. I think that's Love what it. it was. Let's go for another ball. Do you like them? Yeah, good idea. This is good yeah, idea. Yeah, I like that. We'll, we'll do two more, I think. Okay. Describe grime to a five-year-old. <laughs> There's a person, right? And they do music videos, like little videos, and they teach in kids like numbers, maths, English yeah. via like grime. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to find out who it is. Uh, it's a person. They do it perfectly. Okay. They really? do it perfect. I swear. They do it so perfectly. I just forgot. I was trying name. to explain to my wife yeah. the difference between UK garage and, and yeah. grind. I couldn't. And that's why I was generally asking. No. So yeah. I thought, I tried to, how do I simplify it further? Yeah. I thought, right, speaking to a kid, yeah, yeah, how yeah. do you explain yeah, it to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So grime to a five-year-old. Grime is a genre of music which stemmed from garage and it has dark bass lines, and it has um, similar beats, but I guess it had a new era of young people spitting bars on it that hadn't emerged before. So there was like a lot of, like <laughs> spitting in English, Yeah. number one. Because yeah. a lot of people, not a lot, but some people um, in England before those times, they were kind of English, but spitting like an American accent. Yeah. So it definitely kind of birthed yeah. all our English accent. London, Manchester, Birmingham, wherever yeah. you're from, yeah. you're spitting bars in your accent over these beats and bass, okay. which I don't think was fully so there. So to a five-year-old, it was you're, you're saying it's dark, it's bass, it's, it's, it's British. It's British for sure. And it's, it's, it's dark beats, dark bass, it's... it's okay. It's um Is it angry music would you describe it as to Well, a here's the thing. When I'm young when I was younger, it was energy. I guess it was yeah. just like young people's energy. Right. Now I'm older, I'm not trying to run on a stage and be like, ah, nah, ah. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that, right? But yes, there's elements of having to have energy within it, Got it. I nice. guess. Nice, love it. I guess. All right, let's do another one. Yeah, yeah. If you start running out of space, let's move the, we can always move the cups. Scariest experience to date. Um, the scariest experience I've had was me and my friend, uh, DJ Target, we was, years and years ago, we was, um, we was in Bo, was in Roman Road, um, and we was going, was go, we, he had his car, we was driving to Limehouse. And at the time I was like in the streets, it was mad, it was up and down, this one don't like you, we don't like that one, running each other, like chasing each other down, it was one of these times. And um, I remember, I was selling, weed at the time and I went to sell some weed to someone and when I got there they was like moaning like right go on touch it up a bit in it touch it up a bit it was one of them ones and I was like okay cool touch it up a bit then he tried to do that one yeah like so touch what, it up what does that mean like put a little bit more in okay touch it up a yeah. bit <laughs> yeah Let's put a little bit more in tried to do it again I was like no nah, no nah, that's it like where's the money then they gave me the money but the mood was off. The mood was off like, right, these people are trying it kind of thing. And then, so I left. This was prior to me and him driving, right? And then 
they rung again. And this time round, I went there, but I felt like they was trying it. So I had a car jack with me, so I went round there. Then one of them tried it. I pulled out the car jack. Didn't have a knife. Chased him. So no, no car jack. This is before knife. See, because okay. in this time, a knife, it weren't necessarily in my culture. It wasn't there yet. Like okay. it was more to do with like. It just weren't in my culture. It might have been like more in the Teddy Boys culture. You heard of them, the Teddy Boys, uh, skinhead, um, Doctor Martin Boots, okay. and more in their culture. Okay. It weren't in my culture yet. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, so Car Jack went round there. Someone's trying it. Chased them down. Car Jack. Obviously, they got away. I, 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 I ran for a bit, and then when they had gone, I was like, "Right, good. You've run away, right?" Then the night time comes, so me and my guys driving, and because all that's happened in the day, all over just petty weed, right? Because that happened in the day, whoever was part of that circle, in their mind, they decided, I'm gonna go after this guy, right? So the night time come, and we, we were somewhere in Bow again, then we were started to drive, right? But, as we started to drive, I looked in the um, mirror, just whatever, and I could see a moped, but didn't think nothing of it, right? So at the time, just a ah, moped. And driving and driving, look, still moped. The moped, the person on the moped had like a, um, um, you know, the um, postman jackets, mm. like a big yeah. orange jacket with yeah. reflectors. He had yeah. a jacket on. And I was thinking, right, oh, this bike's been following for ages. So, cause I'm already paranoid from, okay, this happened in the day quite petty, but because I'm doing what I'm doing and they didn't like how it went in the day, nighttime, they're gonna try and come for me, right? Yep. And and that was, the, the the what happened in the house was one part just before what I'm gonna tell you now, but a string of stuff led to that, which I'm not gonna go down. It just kept going on and on and on. That day was that day, nighttime now, yeah? yeah. Driving, then all of a sudden, we got to like Blackwall Tunnel approach and the lights went red. So we had to stop and then we're sitting in the car and then the bike was getting closer, the ped was getting closer and closer, I remember. Closer and closer and closer and closer. And then the person went in there like that, like obviously to pull out a gun yeah. and shoot. And then I was like, drive, drive, Frank, panic. Because I'm not, cause the person who I was, the people I was having drama with, I knew who their dangerous person was, right? Mm. And it's not to do with I was scared or not scared. I just knew that that person does their, they yeah. will do what they say they're gonna do. Yeah. And I didn't think it was him. But as I looked, obviously he had his helmet, but I could see hair. Yeah. And I just saw who it was, basically. Panic, bibbing, free, free. open the door, open the door, but where am I going? As I open the door, because where are you going to run to if he's going to do that? But as I open the door, he backed off on his bike, right? Okay. But he was pulling yeah. the thing out to shoot, yeah. basically. And then the lights went green, jumped back in, drove off, sped off. And then, like, sped off quite fast, got away. But as I looked, I could still see him back there. But he's on a 50cc bike. Okay. And we're in a car, yeah. so obviously we got away. But obviously that day there, yeah. he was coming to Had shoot. Had you sleep that night? Oh man, I don't know if I did, but he was obviously coming to shoot. Obviously that time and wow. Yeah, how but, old? How old were you back then? Oh, 19, 18, 19, 19. Still a kid. Yeah, but like, obviously some people have been shot. You get me? But that was my first time of, oh, bro, who is it? Oh, is it my man? Oh my god. He does do that. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna do it. Hard oh, drive. Through. He's gonna like That's crazy. panic. Like the worst panic ever, because I know that he would do it. Not everyone would do it. Some people yeah. will pull it out and shoot in the sky, but this yeah. person. Yeah, he had a reputation. Yeah, he hundred he was gonna do it. Like, even if he hadn't shot anyone before or whatever. Well, that's mental. Yeah, like, he definitely was gonna do it. But we got away. I'm, I'm so glad we got away, because otherwise it would have been shooting at Blackwall Tunnel approach. On my side as well, as well as right there, obviously nightmare. So that's 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 the closest. Obviously stabbed, but stabbed's not gun. 
Stabbed is like stabbed, bleeding. Okay, cool. You make it sound like it's trivial. Stitch me up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like shooting Wally, that's not normal. Is very it's not, it's not trivial not, to be stabbed multiple nah. times. No, but sh but stabbed is kind of like... Because when you're getting stabbed, you can't even feel it. It just feels like pinches. Yeah. It just feels like pinches. Then when you get bleeding, you feel wet. Then you get to the hospital then you're bleeding. So stabbing is kind of... Depending, like, because I know some situations are like crazy. But you see when yeah. someone who you know will shoot you yeah. pulls up at the side of your car. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's do one more. Here we go. He's enjoying it. That's why. Oh. Subject of crime or godfather of crime. Yeah. Godfather of crime. So the, are you the subject of crime? Yeah. I.e. do you attract crime? Your, your past? Have you given crimes out? We've talked a little bit about that. Or are you the godfather of crime? So I'm the godfather of crime. Yeah. I, 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 you know what it is? Depending on, all right, so so growing up, yeah, this is really mad as well. Growing up in England, yeah, right, and going to school with all different people and understanding um, just life, right? Growing up, the great train robbery. Um, growing up on a council state, the great train robbers are heroes. Yeah. Naturally, the great train robbers are heroes. In Mexico, you grow up in Mexico, to some people, Pablo Escobar is a hero. To some people, he's not. They hate him because of whatever, you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. as a boy growing up in a poorer area than the richest area, stupid things like getting arrested are good. Doesn't make sense, does it? Because yeah. all it getting arrested and then you come back to your estate. Yeah, man, I got arrested. Yeah, man, got shift. Is people, it a respect thing? People, it's it's not necessarily just respect, but it's like that's one element of it. But it's like, oh my god, you got arrested. What happened? The police. Yeah, it's yeah. that right. So it's us against them. Right, but the thing but is, it's the oppressor against the oppressor. Right, but the thing is, if I speak, if I had a conversation now with all young people growing up the first thing I would say to them is stay away from the police. Because you don't want, getting arrested is not cool. Going to prison is not cool. Um, like coming from a poorer background, our best bet is to stay away from the police. Yeah. You don't want a criminal record. You get what I'm saying? You don't want to, there's loads of things because it's a setup. It's not a coincidence that if there's a poor area and then there's people with nothing, that they might not commit crime. It's a setup. You're there, you're already, they're already going to drive around and look to see you make your move wrong, right? Yeah. So it's a setup. And, and again, I watch loads of documentaries which explain the beginning and um, the starting of the police force and who they are and why they started it and all the rest of it. So it's, it's kind of like a setup. So don't fall for it. That's what I'd say now. But growing up, it's like we, we couldn't wait to get arrested. Yeah. Why do we want to get That's arrested? That's very, very weird. It's actually exactly yeah. my point. So, and also look, in England, people will celebrate some of the criminals that they know of, or like if, I don't even think of it that way, but they would. So just say one person said the craze were criminals. Well, it's people I went to school with and they celebrate the craze. So we celebrate our gangsters, if you like. Yeah. Like, not just the craze. That would be my friend's ones, right? But just whoever. It's like, we celebrate gangsterism. Because we, some of us know that, okay, we're from this background. Which, ironically, Godfather, <laughs> you know, if you think about there the, you go. the movie, <laughs> the OG go. of, you know. And that's another part the of it, the of mafia gangsters. and yeah, all yeah. the films. And Man, the, you're the Godfather through and through. You know what I'm saying? That's so it. it's, 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 it's one of them ones, I guess. Yeah. It's like, amazing. yeah, you're from this side. That's the police. You know, um, don't grasp to the police. Like, it's, it's yeah. so many different elements of, so, so yeah, I am the Godfather of Grime. But now talking back to young people, I would just be like, listen, don't get arrested. Stay away from the police. Stay out. Never be bored. Yeah. Because when you're bored, you do stupid stuff, right? 
don't be bored. Like always uh, follow your passion, follow your intuition. Like try to yeah. do stuff, no matter what level of poverty we're at, because there's people who come from like this level of poverty and then all of a sudden they might be in the Premier League or, you know, like Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury. Yeah. Francis Ngannou's come from like a different level of poverty. Um, Tyson Fury might be come from like traveler background, right? But then they're both in Riyadh getting money. So work your way out. And don't forget your people and always go back and, but just try to, and encourage others right. to work your way out. Like don't, don't get stuck in that. Yeah, I got shift on Friday. What did you get shift for? Oh, I had five bags of weed on me. But it's going to be nothing. I'm going to court and I'm going to get a 500 pound fine. It's just a waste of time. It it's a waste. It goes on your record. You, if your record has got one conviction on it and you don't know lawyers and you don't know certain people, you might want to travel to America. Travel to America, do your Esther. You've got to put your police record on there. They're going to turn you away because your police record. So it's just a waste of time, I guess. Wiley, this hasn't been a waste of time. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Really enjoyed having you, mate. Thank you, bro. Best Thank of you. luck and uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you. <laughs>